Let's get it together, loud as we can, for Austin St. John, Walter Jones, Karen Ashley, and Johnny Young Bosch, your Power Rangers! Welcome, welcome. Yes, you can stand, you can, we can wander, we can do whatever you gentlemen and ladies would like to do up here on the stage. So this is- I know, it's like, what are we doing? Sounds good. Yeah, why are you guys I'm standing behind the I gotta chairs? stand, I like the energy. What's up, Austin, guys? How y'all doing? Start at the trend. <laughs> I, I actually had to practice getting into these chairs because I'm short. So it's <laughs> That's funny. I know this is not for short girls. No, it's not. <laughs> it is awesome to be back at Awesome Con, eh? Yeah. I would say I could see you, but I'm blinded by the light. Blinded by the light. Get it, Johnny. <laughs> Wait, what? What are we doing? <laughs> so. This is your solo, your singing solo. <laughs> when I had a chance, I was looking through, like I said, I've interviewed uh, Walter and Austin before, but when I realized that Johnny was going to be here, I was telling some of these folks out here, I'm a huge anime nerd, and it was like, so there's a reason you're sitting here. I'm very pleased to meet you. So <laughs> with that said, you guys, go ahead and cue yourselves up on the mic, but I want to start by having you tell me your audition stories, because at the time, when this show got started, it was so different than the way we're doing things now. So let's go ahead and start with you, Austin. Tell me your audition story and then we'll just work our way down the line I'm I'm a kind of I'm that lucky story you hear about in Hollywood I wasn't an actor I didn't know anything about acting at all other than there were people that did it in Hollywood that's what I knew about acting I was actually in high school I was teaching martial arts I was doing martial arts every day I played football I was a high school kid with attitude literally 17 years old and you laugh but it's true it's true and uh, I ended up meeting a acting coach who was like, you should come check out our, uh, our acting classes. And I was like, I don't want to act. I don't like acting. I don't want anything to do with it. He's like, you can pick up some students for your dojo from my class. I was like, that makes sense. Long story short, he started bugging me about this audition. He goes, there's a show called Phantoms, and you should check it out. You should go do this audition. I'm, I'm telling you, you fit the bill, martial artist, young guy, attitude. I'm like, what are you trying to tell me? So I wouldn't do it. He bet me $20 that I wouldn't be wasting my time if I went to the audition. And I lost 20 bucks, five auditions later, here I am. Yes. <laughs> That's a great story. I still owe him 20 bucks. <laughs> My story's a little different. I actually had gone to college, I studied um, acting, and got a degree in musical theater, so I, it's something I was pursuing. I traveled on cruise ships for three years and decided, oh, I gotta give LA a shot, let me get off these cruise ships, stop traveling the world, and. Uh, get an agent in LA, so I did that. And uh, one, of, I did some extra work on 90210. Uh, people tell me that they saw it every now and then. Like I saw you on 90210. I was an extra. <laughs> I was right. I was, I was the locker kid, right? It was crazy. So um, I got a call for Power Rangers, who was actually called Phantoms, like he mentioned. But I was on the way to go do Star Search. I was doing Ed Men's Star Search as a singer. Lost my voice on the way there. And uh, one of my group members had to sing the solo that I was supposed to sing. We lost. And uh, on the way out there, I got a call from the agent and said, hey, there's an audition. They want to see you tomorrow. And I was like, I can't go because I'm doing a star search show. And they were like, ah, oh, so, sounds like it was a great opportunity. It's 40 episodes they picked it up for a season. And I'm like, man, series regular. You know, they need you to do hip hop and dancing and martial arts. And I'm like, I could do all that. And they're like, oh man. So I missed the audition and I lost on Star Search, kind of bummed out, got back in there, called me and said, hey, they still want to see you. So I went into the audition and, uh, and they were like, you know, I did my sides and my acting part. I knew I had that down. I was like, okay, I got acting, I got acting chops. Did that. They were like, that was great. So can you, can you dance a little? So I did some dancing. Hey, working it out. Right? Show it, show it. That's nice. Ooh, Very nice. Right, see? <laughs> and then when I did some martial arts, I did a little kata. They said, can you do any flips? There's not a lot of space in here, but it can show us something. So I did a back, back tuck, landed it. And they went, that was great. Now, can you do it all together? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, all together, you want the whole martial arts, gymnastics, and, oh, huh, okay. So I did some punches. Did some martial arts. I did a, a, a break dancing flare where my legs go up in the air. I came down, I landed, did a couple of kicks, kind of stood up, did a backflip, and then bowed out. And they were like, yeah, we want to see you again tomorrow. So uh, <laughs> about five auditions later and, and worked with this guy, and uh, we, we, we became the Power Rangers. That's awesome. Very, Very good. Our audition was completely different from that. <laughs> we, um, the show was obviously already out, and 
uh, a friend of mine told me about the audition, said that they were looking for people to be on Power Rangers. I think I was probably the only person who hadn't heard of the show. I would, had just graduated high school, so I was busy trying to like get into college. And I was auditioning an actress. I'd been in the business since I was like 12. So I was like, yeah, TV show, wow. And I was in Dallas, so it was great. I went and there were like thousands of people lined up. And I was like, oh my God, we're gonna be here all day. And I literally waited all day for 30 seconds in front of the casting agent and I did like a little monologue and um, she said, you know, you had to be a dancer, a gymnast or a martial artist. I was a dancer. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna dance. And she says, okay, dance. And I go, well, I brought music. And she was like, mm, we don't have a radio, dance. <laughs> and so you just had to hit it. So I hit it and she goes, okay, okay. So she was like, can you come back later this afternoon? And I was like, of course. And so I knew I had a call back at least. And um, she said they were gonna be videotaping us for the producers, so super excited. And I thought, okay, there'll probably be like 20 people. I show up, there's a couple hundred. <laughs> so the thousand went to like a couple hundred. It's still cool. I just like sat there and waited for hours for my turn. And um, I went in and this time they had a radio and I got to really do my audition and, and do like a two minute dance piece. And then, um, and back then, you know, in the 90s, like dancing was very athletic. So, I mean, it was, I was rolling around the floor and jumping through the air and doing all this crazy stuff. And, um, and I think two days later, they called us like early in the morning and said, you know, can you go to LA tomorrow? And we want to fly you to meet the producers and to, it'll be your final audition. We were, I was just like, oh my God, yes, yes. So I took two outfits because she specifically said, you'll only be there overnight. And I was like, okay, cool. So I just brought something to audition in and something to wear the next day. And I get there, we literally auditioned for like, three hours, four hours, they just kept bringing us in and putting us in groups and we went through this whole process. And by that evening, they sat everybody in the same room and said, you, you, and you, you get the part. And we were like, ah, we were crying and hugging each other. And then we heard someone else crying and it was the people who didn't get the part. It was terrible. I know it was bad. But, and we found out that day, we were on the show and we, you know, got the movie. We we're gonna get to do a movie and we were just excited. That's a congratulations. You nailed it. Two days turned into like what, seven years? Yeah, yeah. It was, well, it was like um, it was like a matter of four days, like a week, that this whole thing took place. Yeah, it just yeah. kept going. Yeah, you know, yeah. Then we did wardrobe stuff. Then we had to do some fight test stuff. Yeah, we yeah. had no clothes. Like there was no parents, Target back then. You could just run yeah. down the street. Well, I, we did. We went to Target to just like did, grab. We had to like grab like just essentials. I had nothing. We had like one outfit. I was sleeping in it. my in a pile of clothes. <laughs> yes. I like. I didn't have a blanket, a bed for the longest time. I yeah. didn't have anything. I like. I, I went we didn't to get his paid house. forever. Yeah, we had to like wait weeks till we got yeah. paid, and, and I, went I didn't to his like house. have a job before. You guys got paid, so I just had like literally the clothes that were in my I went suitcase, to his house and I was, was sleeping like, in it. Are you sleeping here? Yeah, and I, I like, gave him a pillow, gave him a blanket. There was actually three days where I had nothing to eat because there's no money, and I was like dying. And then she had called me up out of the blue. and was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm hungry." I was like, oh <laughs> she was my like, God. "Come over here, make a sandwich." Sorry, never made a sandwich. My, of course, I'm a girl, so all my whole family like <laughs> sent me money, sent me like they set me up. He got to, he got to eat. Your your audition story. How did it go then? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to a ninja competition with my friends from high school, um, Stone Canyon. And, uh, oh wait, that's, that's the show, sorry. No, um, oh, the real one, okay, so it's actually very similar to hers. Um, I was in Texas studying Shaolin Kung Fu. My martial arts instructor was reading the paper and he's like, hey, they're looking for new Power Rangers. And he said, I think you should give it a shot. And I was like, what is this, like stunt people? He's like, I don't know, just new Rangers. And um, it said in there, you had to be a dancer or a martial artist or a gymnast. And I couldn't dance, but I can do martial arts and I can flip. Um, so he helped me put together a routine. And it was basically the same thing. Yeah, the same I went idea. there, and then it was like, it felt like thousands of people. I remember walking down the thing thinking, dude, I'm not getting into this, but I'm glad I'm here to try it. Um, and I remember a guy with his legs sticking up out of, you know, like martial arts kick, whatever, like a Jackie Chan movie. And then later, that would be Steve Cardenas. Um, <laughs> I was like, who's this guy we with his legs sticking up, audition. showing off? Um, and then, so I get to the back of the line, 
And then, yeah, they, they call us in one by one. They, 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 like 20 at a time, and then they go, you, 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 get back in line, rest, you go home. And so at first it was like looks, and then they would bring us in and ask us to do whatever it is that we could do uh, physically. And then, they, then I got a monologue. And then I, I you know, and I had like, because I knew I had to do martial arts, so I did all the flipping stuff or whatever, and there were like angry guys there. And then one lady, what was her name? I can't remember her name. Katie Wong. Katie Wong. Yes. Katie Wong. And she was just so friend. She's like a smile on her face. She was like a the, mom figure. Everyone else oh, yeah. was just like, did not want to be there. And so I would just do my flips and kicks and just look at her and smile, you know, because <laughs> that's all I got from her. And I was like, that's cool. These guys are And she jerks. was beautiful. And she, yeah. she was too, right? Yeah. So it was like, kind of like, you got to show off. Yeah. You know, got to <laughs> impress her. <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, so I did that. Then I had to come back. Oh, and I had my like martial arts pants on. So I went after I got the monologue. I thought I was only gonna be doing this little bit of monologue. <laughs> and so I went, and th that was back in the day, some tight pants in Texas. And so I came back with jeans on, walking through the mall, memorizing this thing. And then I went back to my audition. I read the thing, and they're like, "Can we see more of that martial arts stuff?" And I was like. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. And uh, I'd never done it in tight jeans before, but I swear my kicks were like, like this, <laughs> you know? And uh, again, I just looked at Katie, I was just smiling. <laughs> you know, I was still able to get my flips and everything, but you know, I was just winging it. I was like, I blew it. And then, uh, what was it, like maybe a few, I felt like weeks, because I'd went and I, because I went to register and I went to college. I was like, it was all in the same yeah. week? Okay, because I had gone off to college. <laughs> and I was in a dorm room with some strange dude, like, who was moping around. And I get a call from my brother. And uh, my brother's like, hey, they want you to come to uh, California to do another audition. And I was like, if you're joking, I'm going to kill you. And he's like, no, no, seriously. And he could. Go. Yeah, and I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm, let's go. Because I didn't want to be next to this guy. Um, it was just like sad about life. Oh, it was miserable. So I, I couldn't wait. It was exciting. And then we went and it was like, I remember going there for the final audition and it was like all these Asian dudes, like a bunch of them, and then some <laughs> Hispanic dudes and some African American females. And I was like, well, I'm definitely in that line. <laughs> And I was like, why are there so, and there were so many Asian dudes in there. I was like, I got a lot more dudes <laughs> to compete against. Um, but then they would mix and match us. Yeah. Um, in fact, I found the old script just the other day cleaning out my studio. What? Yeah, yeah, I should post it. Yeah. But it's like new black, new, and then that's when I found out, I was like, wait a minute, are we actually replacing? That, yeah, we had no idea That we was like when we found people. out, it was like, wait, are we replacing or is this like a new, we didn't really know. Um, and so they mix and match us and uh, <laughs> Long story short, yeah. But I do remember the other thing was like, and I can't remember, he sat us all down, right? I think it was maybe individually. And he puts down this contract and it was like a phone book yeah. right in front of you, Haim yeah. Saban and then his lawyers. And you're just like some, like me, I was just like a kid, you know? I'm like, oh, hey, what is this, a contract? Oh, and he's like, yeah, like, yeah, what? five years. You know, I was like, hey, do you wanna, you know? Oh, this is what he said to me. He's like, you are going to make me millions. <laughs> That sounds like Heim. Not, You're gonna make me millions not, and yeah. you, you make some money. And I was like, uh, oh. And I didn't know what that meant, right? And he's like, are you okay with that? I was like, sure. And he's like, sign here. And then the, the lawyers took over and I was like, just sign and stuff. I was like, yeah, yeah, all right. Until Never you do. Never do that again. Yeah, won't do that yeah. again. Won't do that again. Won't do that again. When you see words like forever and perpetuity throughout the universe, <laughs> Run. <laughs> right. So you see the, these toys with our faces on them now. The new ones that come out. It's like, oh, wow. That's, what, that, that's why that he's a billionaire. Did you, did you and to, I made some money. Did you ever have to start with, uh, with uh, Tadashi? He was doing like all the rising sun stunts. Like he was the big dog. Like that's how we got tested. You remember that? They brought, he was an eighth Don in Wadaroo. Like I had a second Don. And I remember the sparring. When they set us up, there, and I can remember Strath Hamilton, the director, was like, hey, yeah, uh, listen, I'm going to need you to spar with, uh, with Tadashi here, and uh, he's going to let me know if you've got what it, what it takes. And I was like, oh, like okay. an actual spar? Yeah, like we you had to spar? Like they rented out a whole gym, yeah, we to to and it was just yeah. weeks. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like underground we, fighting we had, for us, like, like the kumite. No, I mean, it wasn't a kumite. <laughs> like but, the Denmark. But they brought us in, and I could just remember, I'm, I'm, I wasn't even 18 yet. And they're like, yeah, we're going to need you to spar with him, and all of us did. And he's going to let us know if you've got what it takes. And I was like, he's an eight darn. <laughs> like, I, I thought I was going to die. I thought he was going to kill me. 
And he just, he was like an angry hobbit, but he was doing all the, the stunts for the Rising Sun and all the, uh, the, the big movies at the time. And I was terrified, but I sparred with him and, uh, you know, I guess it worked. There was Live. one point in that sparring situation, though, where they, uh, where he actually got hit because there was a, I guess you had to swing on him and you, you, you caught him. And he got hit, flipped across the floor, and then stood up, and he stood up like, I thought I was gonna die. Like the, like the villain coming back. It was like, it was, it was like, oh my it was god, dramatic. He's about to kill him, and, and we were all like, oh, and we were, and, and he looked, his face kind of looked like, oh shit, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I and mean, he was like, and he kind of gave him a little, like, keep going, go. And so they, they walked up and they like, they start sparring again. They started circling. Again. We, we picked up right where we he left off. We picked up right where we left off, and it was intense. And everybody, after it was done, everybody was like, yeah. Oh man! We got standing so if ovations. you didn't pee your pants, you got the part. Oh man, I wanted to though. I tell you what, it was it was one of those things where while we choreographed this fight, there was this one section where we were tight, like close, and he wanted this full power reverse crescent, and I had been pulling the speed off of it because I knew I was going to kick him if if I did it. So all these practice times, all the choreography, I kept pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, and it was still quick, but I was pulling it. And we got into the final audition in that big room, and he's and he was like, "Fasta." Faster! And he was grunting at me while he was while we started the choreography, and pressure, scared, they, all the heat from all these guys in suits that looked important, and there was people from Fox, and I went faster and I caught him square upside his head, but only he could make it look good. Like it turned into this swan dive, and just like Walt said, he got up and he looked at me, and I was like, he's going to eat me for breakfast right now. I was terrified, and he came back in and he, he telegraphed to let me know we were going to pick up right where we left off, I hope. And we hammered that thing. Everybody, when it was done, standing, that's the best fight we've seen all day. It looks so real. I was like, it was. <laughs> oh, it was. Can you, can you send me out to the hallway with security? Because I think he still might kill me. If you guys have questions, do line up at the mic. I'll make sure to include you in the conversation. I want to ask about the moment you got the outfit. You got the costume. Well, you put it on. You look at yourself in the mirror, you're like, yes. What was your, what <laughs> okay, you go first, Austin, because you look like I took you back someplace special. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> All right, guys and girls, at 18, how secure are you with your whole like physical appearance 40, in the world? At 40, how secure are you? At 40, right? Like, I mean, come on. Okay, so I'm not a fan of red to begin with, or wasn't, and they showed me this spandex thing that before you put it on, it was like that big around, and they were like, yeah, just put it on. I was like, I really don't want to wear this. I don't want to wear this at all. But then I put it on. I was like, damn. Okay. Look, there's my That's abs. America's booty. Look at these quads. I'm like, oh, okay. And then you notice the bits and pieces that are also out there. And they start, you remember like, I, I, was, I was 18. I was like, uh, my mom always said I should cover these things up, you know? And so then, you know, they came out with like, oh, you guys remember all the compression underwear and like the, the, they're like, oh, we need you to put Spanx. on these ballet pants. And I'm like, ballet pants? What are you trying to do to me? But uh, it was, I was very insecure, but I also thought it was amazing. I remember when they, uh, they brought us to the, to the wardrobe room. They were like, we got your costumes in the, in the wardrobe room. So we're like, all right, this is exciting. So we walk in. I think I was the first to walk in. And I look in, and I see the Red Ranger costume. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's dope. But I see the Black Ranger costume. I was like, I want this one. And they said, that's yours. I was like, Yes. I, so, cause I, I was like, I always wear black anyway. I was like, I like wearing black, and it, it was a bonus. And I remember putting it on. And same thing, you know. It's like uh, you, you kind of like lose some of your modesty, cause you're like, oh well, this, this is all of me. <laughs> hey, how you guys doing? All right, cool, cool. And uh, I, I remember, um, I remember specifically that when we were wearing the costumes and we were doing martial arts or fighting or whatever, there were those times where you had, had lunch and you had drinking too many, too much water or something and, and it became evident. And it was like, okay, somebody get me out of here. <laughs> Cause you couldn't unzip it. It had to be unzipped from the back and my arm was like, uh. We, we, I mean, guys, we can't reach that. Like no. that, we're not designed to reach that far. And I can't tell you how many times we almost became the Yellow Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what was your story when you got yours? It would have been orange. Okay. He's being technical. Ew. 
Uh, same thing. Like we, I, I mean, obviously after we f figured out we got on the show, I went and watched as many episodes as possible. And I was just like, why do we have to wear this? Like this is, like you literally feel like you're naked. And yeah, we had like little spank, like a little bodysuit held it all together. But it was the worst. I mean, I always felt like we were naked and we would they would give us robes and we'd be robed and then when we had to take it off, we'd take it off and we didn't get any robes. But yeah, yeah. Well the What's girls up with that? they always gave the girls extras. Like we always got robes, we were always cold and girls I would, had different issues. Yeah, it was yeah, we had so many issues, like literally every day on the in, in front of the whole crew on the like walkie, they'd be like, Karen needs band-aids, Karen needs band-aids. And so you know what that meant? I was cold. <laughs> but it was like outstanding. <laughs> yeah, you had to like <laughs> let go of all of that because you're on a TV show and you can't be modest and at all. At all. At all. How'd you feel? <laughs> um well I remember going there to the stage and uh walking <laughs> in and they had the monsters of the previous season just up around, you know, in the entrance. And then you go in and you're like, holy cow, I'm here. This is it. This is the Power Rangers set. And I sign in and then you go down the hall and I turn into wardrobe and it, you could smell like the laundry they're cleaning and, you know, and then there's a rack of clothes. So this is the first fitting for me. So I go in there. And I look, and it's like all this Black Ranger stuff. I'm like, oh, sweet. And here's your suit. Oh, awesome. And I pick it up, and I look at it. Oh, there's a tag. It says Walter, Walter. Jones. <laughs> Lots of tweet. Tweet and I was train. Like, we had the oh. exact same suit. Oh, OK. So I, I just, th this is mine? Or, uh, yeah, that's yours. I was like, oh, OK. And so then I slide it on, and it's baggy. And so they have to build muscle suits. <laughs> They did for, it for Steve, too. For me yeah, they need a muscle suit to build So that we could suit. fit into your guys' stuff. Because we were like toothpicks compared to you guys. <laughs> but, uh, the more, yeah. The more you know. Yeah, right. yeah. I was too short. I, literally, I had to wear Tweez boots. And, like, her foot, I think, was a size 7. I was, like, a size 6. And they were like, okay, put three pairs of socks on and you'll be good. And I'm like, okay. Like, we got nothing special. We just wore what you guys left us. <laughs> we got the hand-me-downs. <laughs> You, you made it through. You, you powered through somehow. We have a we question right over here. But you shoes. wore well. You guys wore well. Thank so was you. Our Hi, I'm Jason from uh, New York. What up, Jace? What up? Hey. So after the boom that the series took, after like even after you guys left, did it make you guys want to explore like the origins of this? Like go and watch like the Sentai versions? Or did you guys just never even think of like touching that? This was just a job for you guys, and they kind of they kind of told us right up front. I think we got like a, a fifteen second, maybe a thirty second clip, and we didn't even see the real actors. They're like, this show came from Japan, and I saw the Red Ranger doing Red Ranger stuff, and they were like, and that's what you're going to be picking up. The rest you got to make yours. It's all yours. And I never, I, to this day, I haven't seen the Sentai footage, but I've met like Yuta and the original cast from the Sentai series. And they're incredible. And hearing some of their stories was like at the, the first Power Morphicon in uh, California, or I don't know, like number 14. It was, it was incredible. But I, don't, I haven't seen a whole lot. Although Walter's got some stories about how dark the Sentai series is. Yeah. I'm gonna let him tell those. I'm not talking about it. Uh, <laughs> but no, yeah, the, we, didn't, we didn't really see much of the series, uh, the Sentai series before, um, while we were doing the show. After we were on the show, we were so busy, I didn't have time to watch my own episodes. It was like, you know, we were working sometimes 16 hour days. So, you know, be on the set at 6 a.m. in the morning, and if, depending on where you live, you had to drive at, you know, 5.30, 5 o'clock, get there, wardrobe, everything else, do your whole day, get off at like seven or eight, and then you had to go home and remember, like learn your lines for the next day. So it was like, trying to watch it, on VHS and hope your roommates didn't tape over it when something else it was like weird. It was like it was it was hard to do it and we didn't have a lot of time. I think they had some of the Sentai footage at Saban or at the set and I think one day I kinda like went in there and threw a tape in and kinda looked at it but um I, I didn't really get into it, but we did get to meet the Sentai actors, and that was a great honor because they're amazing. I mean the show ran for twenty years there. So um 
you know, between the, the two of us, the, between them and us, we got 50 years of Power Rangers, which is kind of crazy. And we thank you for that. So thank you guys. Amen. That's a great question. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go to the next person over here, and then I'll come to you. I'll ping pong back and forth. How's it going? I'm Tim from Alexandria. What up, Tim? And um, got a two-part question. First, um, I want to thank you all for coming to Awesome Con and... It's been forever since we've been able to get together. And um, did, did you guys have a favorite moment or episode from the show? And my second part is, do you guys get like time when you go to the conventions to see the sights and everything? Not always. I mean, it's so funny. We kind of have a running joke that we like go to the hotel, go to the convention center, and then we go to dinner. Like dinner is the big outing of the night. And then you're exhausted because you've been here all day. And, and we literally just see the airport and the convention center. But like cities like this, like, I mean, we love, I love DC and I, I love to get away and try to walk around and take, I'm a, I'm a total tourist when I come here. I'm taking pictures of the same monuments I've taken since I was 12. Um, but yeah, we don't, we don't get to get out that much, but we're, we love it. And as far as like favorite episode or favorite moment, I mean, I think anytime we got to be something different or got to like, you know, cause we were always the teenage version, you know? So it was like, I think the wild, wild west episode always jumps in my mind. Cause at that point, the whole cast, we got to like have accents and be a different character that was, you know, related to us, but it was a different character than our original character. So that was fun, but yeah. That's a great question, thank you. DC is kind of my old stomping grounds, so I cut my teeth as a medic in this area. So 16 years, I responded, I was at the Pentagon, so this is, there's a lot of memories for me here. This is Northern Virginia, DC is my hometown, so. Yeah, I wanna know if you could still get like female body inspector shirts, or if those are like <laughs> known. The last time I was here. What are here, you talking about? Last time I was here, like in DC, like in, as you go around, and. They yeah, cut, they cut me you off because I'm talking about. <laughs> like, come on. That's a no. <laughs> he said no, Johnny. Right, they're telling me no. <laughs> the government. No, no. Like he, he walked around, right? And then I remember picking up a couple of these FBI things, and one of the things on like the cut was like female body inspector. I was like, huh. but now I wonder if he can, like, if they still sell that. Probably Do you not. Want that shirt? Johnny? No, I don't. I mean, we, we can't be arranged. But, but, but I did walk one. around with my FBI beanie that I bought. <laughs> And I was walking around like the White House and you see security and they would give me a look because I also had like this jacket that looked like an FBI agent jacket on, like You're a windbreaker. To to I know, I know, right? I know. But they were like, they'd do like a head nod thing and I would, I would be like, and then, no joke, no joke. I would do that, right? I'd head nod back and then I'd go, I'd act like I'm saying something. And just to see. And they were just like, you know, I know. I did that. My, wa my wife was really annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> but I was doing it. She's everywhere. like, he's not one. No, he's not one. Uh, he's taking so, this so, way so, too far. <laughs> Johnny Youngbosch is on a hit list for the government somewhere right now. <laughs> Somebody's got his name. This was his years picture. ago. This was years ago. <laughs> Let's go over here. You've got a question. Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Greg, and I'm from Massachusetts. What's up, Greg? Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is for for Johnny. Uh, do you remember the Power Rangers Zio episode called It Came From Angel Grove? I do, yes. Yeah. The Halloween one, yeah. Yeah, the, ha the Halloween the, the one. The nightmare that Adam I'm has impressed. Here. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Austin. I'm impressed by this. Give these guys a hand for right? signing this whole time. Yes. Right, hey. Guys, Bonk you're high. so talented. Gets a got 10 show. Yeah, see? They're like, oh, come on. How many languages can we start speaking in? Uh, right. just I'm sorry, you had a question about it? Uh, yes. Uh, hey, Austin, <laughs> it's too bad that you weren't there uh, at the time when, uh, when Johnny was in that, that episode. I mean, wouldn't it have been cool to see you as the, one of the characters in that nightmare that Adam had? <laughs> maybe you could have been one of the other, a monster, or maybe just some uh, 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 village person or whatever. Yeah, village. He'd be the village idiot. Village person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the village, he likes the construction village drunkard. <laughs> I'll be the village idiot. I'm good with that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank for, you your for your question. question. Thank you. Yeah. I know that's the part that sucks. We all never got to work together. I know. We, Actually, we, we did. We hate that. We oh, did. yeah, you did. On you worked on the movie. Oh, that's real. Yeah. Zio. We worked on Zio. For a little bit. In the I second movie. Gold Ranger. Yeah. 
Let's go ahead and go over here to you. Hi. Um, hi, my name is Paula Code. Um, hey, Paula. Hey, Paula. Hi. Um, I'm from around here. Um, I was wondering what you do with, um, it's a two-part, um, what do you do with all your fan gifts? And, um, um, oh, oh, any strange fan encounters? <laughs> Paula, you trying Those to start something, Paula. Uh, super interesting question, though, right? Like, what's I have, the like, weird stuff? I have, like, doors and walls covered with, like, art yeah. from Me fans. Me too. Yeah. You guys, there's so much art that comes from you guys. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible. We've got it all. I have it in my house. Yeah. I have a whole office covered in stuff, and it's, it's pretty awesome. I have, like, a 12-foot quilt that has, like, a bunch of anime and Power Rangers stuff wow. on it. That's yeah. awesome. That's cool. I had yeah. somebody crochet, crochet or knit, I'm not, I'm not sure which it was, forgive me, but like handmade this huge blanket full of Power Rangers stuff. And I was just, talent I don't have, crocheting or knitting, I don't know. But we've had some weird encounters. Which, which ones do we want to talk about? <laughs> I don't know. We don't want to give anybody All of ideas. Them. That's no true. Ideas. <laughs> All right. I'll, do I'll not tell, do what these fans did. I I'll remember getting story. panties in the mail from on set. Like when you would get the box of fan mail, and they usually, they would check ours. They would open our, our, our mail, um, but this one they didn't open. And I was like, oh, what's in here? And sure enough, it was like panties. I was like, how did that happen? <laughs> With a picture of the lady. Yeah. Too. yeah. Amy really Joe and I had a steady you... stream of jail mail. We right. had... Oh, yeah. jail mail. We jail. were I have so jail mail. popular You know it's jail, jail mail because it's in pencil, yeah. and it's their inmate numbers written on the yeah. outside. And I was on like, TV for 20 years. Yeah, and it's like, it's like stamped, like from the jail, and they would obviously read all of it, but yeah, it was some interesting letters from the guys. Especially when they're like, here's what I'm getting out. I'm like, I don't want to know that. I don't I care don't, when you're getting out. No, I don't want to know. We've had to sign some interesting Places. parts of people. <laughs> Babies. And no, but we we're not going to do it again. But, and I was like the last one in a long list of like five of y'all. And, we and I got, I got the lowest. Re- charge then. I got <laughs> the <laughs> lowest real estate on the bottom. You got the no, we, no go zone. zone. We were on the bottom part. Y'all like all the brown, signed before like me. The dark, like the, yeah, so they the like s- started at the hips all the way down, and I got like Sunshineville. <laughs> and I was, uh, I signed that thing like Zorro, all across. And then he went and got him tattooed. I was like, why do you want our names on your butt? Forever. <laughs> Who are you going to sell it to? What's wrong with you? But Let me show you my autograph. <laughs> that's what it was. I, I was like, that's... I wouldn't have believed it. Uh, only the way I believed it, that he was going to really go tattoo it, was because Walter and David had signed the year before. <laughs> and they had the top part of the butt, and me and Walter had the bottom part. <laughs> it was so bad. We try, We, like quadruple charge this person. Like, our agent was like, you're kidding me. And no. then I threw the pen away. Yeah, I was like, eh, threw the Sharpie away. He paid, like, five times the price. I don't know. And, and still wanted it. And his kids were with him. His kids were standing there with him. Yes. We're trying to talk him out of it. We're like, we're listen. We're like, dude, it's like, don't do this. Like, and, and my name is long. Like, we're talking both butt cheeks. Like, this... I, I literally zorroed that stuff all across. I was like, you want it, you're going to have it. Right across the both cheeks. And never again. Never again. It's worse when they tell you because then you get nervous. You're like, oh, man. Uh, oh, that's crooked. Oh, man. You go a little slower. There you go. That's a very good answer to that question right there. Thank you. Thank you. All, all I was right. thinking was, please don't pass gas. <laughs> huh? Oh. Go ahead. Hi, how's it going? I'm Will. What up, Will? My inner five-year-old is freaking out because I'm talking to the Power Rangers (laughs) right now. Oh, my God. This is great. Uh, I'm really impressed with the camaraderie you guys have, despite kind of coming from different eras of the show. Is that camaraderie with also kind of like the, the... further series, the, the, the series that followed. Uh, once, once you're a Power Ranger, did Johnny, like Johnny did to the FBI guy, do you kind of give the nod to, to fellow pa- Power Rangers actors? Yeah, yeah it's like, fam- we're like family, yeah. you know? Uh, and, and once we do a lot of these conventions together, we get to hang out more, we get to know each other more. Yeah, yeah, pretty much everyone is cool with each other. There's like one or two black sheep. But, you know. <laughs> One or two haters in the bunch. There's always right. a pooper in the party, right? right? In every family. We're not the poopers. <laughs> we're, we're pretty happy and easy to get along with. We, we love everybody. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, the, the one thing that we all have in common as Rangers is the fact that we have amazing fans like you, and uh, we all know what that feels like. So that's, that's something that, that 
brings us all together. And whenever we're together, uh, we, we, <clears throat> we almost did a, well, we're planning to do a project together called The Order, and we got to work together, working together on that. And that was really cool, because I had never worked with, with Johnny and, or Karen on, on film. And as we were rehearsing and getting it together, it was like really cool to see how talented everybody was. It was like, oh, man, you could do that? That's cool. <laughs> I, I can do this? OK, oh, you, you, let's put it together. You know, like the things we can do together, because there's so many talented people within uh, the Power Rangers uh, universe as far as the cast is concerned. That's, it's really cool to know everybody. Yeah. It's amazing what you can do with open-minded creativity. And that's what we represent, I think, from all the casts. Open-minded creativity. Yep. Yep. It's the staying power of the show. Great question. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm going to stay over on this side because this is where the longer line is queued up. So from now on, if you want to ask a question, just get in line over there so we can try to get to as many of them as possible. Go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm Mark from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, my inner fanboy is also freaking out, but I'm not going to say how old I was when Power Rangers started. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, well, first off, thank you to all of you for the part you played in taking Japanese Super Sentai and turning it into a worldwide Power Rangers phenomenon. It's amazing. Um, I actually have a question for Walter. So we were treated to a little bit of Johnny singing at the beginning of the, the event here, and you mentioned that you had lost your voice going into a competition, and I was curious if you might be willing to share a little bit of uh, what, your, what your piece was. Uh, oh, the piece. Oh, yes. wow. Uh, well, <coughs> me, 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 me. Uh, I, you know, I was, I was doing a Michael Jackson. I was like, oh, baby, give me one more chance. That, that, but, that was that was then. <laughs> and I was, give me one more chance. There you go. Hey, get it, man. You got the you got the tenor, the high tenor. I used to have the high tenor. Things have changed. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Walter can sing though. I've heard him sing. He's, oh yeah, he does he a is, mean he karaoke. Is, he's good. Mustang he's salad. Good. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Hi. How are you? Hi, I'm Brandon from uh, uh, Baltimore, Maryland as well. Um, I want to say two things. Number one, thank you. And yes. number two, is life treating you good? Oh, yeah. Good yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, thank absolutely. You. We're blessed, man. We're blessed, uh, blessed and aware. That's what I like to say, you know. Uh, I think one of the things that's most important to do is to count your blessings. And we have a lot of blessings to count. So, uh, and again, it's, it's like being here, being out, being together, and, and being alive. We're all happy. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. I love that. Come on up, get your question in. Yeah, um, this is Alex from Alexandria, Virginia. What's up, Alex? Hey, Alex. Hey. Hi. So I also got a question. Um, I know you work to 16-hour days, but um, when you, like, did you get a break in between work, and how much time did you get off, like, in between working on movies? Lunch. Like, like you, I, I mean, did sometimes you rushed. Time, like, did you have like a time where you weren't doing movies and you just had some days where you were off and oh, like a hiatus? Did, like, how long was it? We got our first hiatus at the end of the entire year. Yeah. <laughs> like two to three episodes a week for a full year. We got Sunday off because we'd film Monday through Friday. Saturday was ADR, where we'd go in and you know do the audio, audio digital recording over you know the the costume Quite footage, seven. and then Sunday was like the day. That was it. You, you and then we got, we got, he gave us a week for Christmas after the end of the first year. Just a week for Christmas after the That was it. That's when I figured out we were famous. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went to the mall. That was a mistake. Yeah, it, was the, it, was, it was the marker for me. It was like TV guy, like uh, Disney's Adventures. I was like, that's me. Yo, that's, we're, on a, we're on a TV guy. Do y'all even know what that crazy. is? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are old. <laughs> yeah, what's TV what's guy? TV guy. Yeah, what's TV guy? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right, come on up. Get your question in. Uh, my name is Phil DiMaggio. I'm from uh, Capra County, Maryland. DiMaggio, so, man. <laughs> uh, what do you think your favorite, your character's favorite philosopher would have been and why? Ooh, well, oh, gosh. Okay. Phil, <laughs> you're making us think this morning. You, you know what my favorite turnaround is? Well, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think my character would say? I don't know. I don't, all I know is Socrates. <laughs> well, I'm going to go Socrates because so that's the only one. Um, <laughs> man, Rumi? that's I tricky. Don't know. That's well, they wrote my character, even though he was Korean, very Chinese. <laughs> so <laughs> it'd probably be Confucius. <laughs> I think for me it would have been Sun Tzu. 
Mine would have been Beyonce. I mean, Aisha, Beyonce. There you go. Makes sense. Going back to your crush days. I would probably say oh, mine would probably oh, just oh, be oh. from the Bible. Jesus, you know, treat those, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated more or less. So. Thank you. That's why everybody loves Zach. Come on up. Hello, my name is Michael from PG County, Maryland. What up, what up? I had a question to ask you guys. If someone would ask you what would your favorite monster that you fought in the series would be, what would that be? I like the putties. <laughs> putties. Uh, I like yeah. the ooze Goldar. guys. The ooze guys. Ooze I guys. like recently. Ivan Ooze. Ivan Ooze and his his minions. Like I I saw a piece of the movie recently and I was like, oh my god, that was like so cool. So yeah. I had to fight the nasty knight. He was pretty cool. That was a, that was fun. <coughs> he was nasty. I think for me, I mean, like Jason fought Goldar. Like that was his regular job. It's like, Rangers! You know, it's like, I, I hear that in my sleep 30 years later. I just, it would have to be gold on. That's a great question. Thank you. Come on up. We, we thought you said Jason Font. Font. And I was like, yeah, what does he have like, to do what? with Goldar? But, but it was, you said Jason Font. Goldar. Leave it to your friends to throw you under the bus on, on stage, all right? That's what it is. I got it. I want to interrupt. <laughs> please, please interrupt us. I'm, uh, oh I'm Troy God. from uh, Alexandria, Virginia as well. Whatever, man. Uh, specifically, with my questions for you, Walter, uh, I, I break, and I just wanted to know, like, what your, like, history of your dance training is. You know what? I, I, I started dancing when I was a kid, like, uh, four years old or whatever. I was, I was inspired by Michael Jackson, so um, I remember... Uh, we had a birthday party for one of my cousins, and, and everybody was dancing, you know, and, and I, was looking on, I was looking at everybody dance, and I told my grandma, I said, I want to I wanna go dance, and she said, go on out there, baby, go, do your thing, and, and I went out there, and I started doing Michael Jackson, and everybody stopped, I was like, yo, you're doing Michael Jackson, and they were hyped. At that point, I fell in love with dancing, because I was like, oh, wow, people love when I do stuff, and... Um, so as I got older, I, I did pop locking when I was in high school, and then break dancing came out, and I, I had the cardboard out in the front yard, and we would, me and my neighborhood would go against other neighborhoods, and we would break dance, and I was never the best break dancer, but I had a few special moves I could do. I had like a couple of things I'll pull out, yeah, the flare, right? So I'll do something like that, and everybody be like, oh, they would go crazy, you know? And I get up like, yeah, that's right, that's right. Like, we hit that move like. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so I did that, and after I did break dancing, and I, I went to college and I studied um, jazz, tap, ballet, modern, uh, and now I dance uh, Latin. So I do salsa, bachata, kizomba, zouk, uh, merengue, cha cha. I, I love dancing. And he always leaves out the part where he's a legitimate world champion salsa dancer. Yeah. Legit. <laughs> Thank you. Like, oops, that slipped my mind. <laughs> There's three more people on this side, and then I'll come to you, and if we have time, I can see you guys queuing up. Go ahead, get your question in. Love your dress. Yep. Thank you. That's awesome. Hi, uh, I'm Laura. I'm from Fairfax, Virginia, and I'm genuinely freaking out right now. It's my first ever convention period, and the fact oh. that you guys are here, wow. I'm like... Yay. Welcome! Welcome. Welcome. Yay! Yay. My, my hands are sweaty, but um, I just wanted to bring something up to, to Johnny. Um, for me, growing up, I was like 10 when Power Rangers was on, and your episode, Mirror of Regret, um, had a huge huge impact on me. The fact to see a superhero fighting with their own self-esteem and confidence, and for someone like me, who even now, to this day, I still have self-esteem challenges, it had a massive impact on me as a 10-year-old. And also for Karen and Walter, seeing you guys on screen, this Power Rangers was the first live action show I watched. Before that, it was like Disney stuff and cartoons. Um, so the, just in the past year, with everything that happened with Black Lives Matter, I, I didn't really fully get the impact of seeing you guys on my screen as a 10-year-old. And so I, I really just want to say thank you guys for oh, thank for you. this. That's awesome. Thank I'm you. Like, very, very cool. So, yeah. yeah, Power Rangers was like ahead of its time. Like that's one thing I want to, I always give them props because back then, I mean, literally every kid got someone who looked like them. And, and representation is such a huge thing. And we weren't just the friend or we were actually superheroes. and 
we actually saved the day. And I mean, we were girl power before girl power was even popular. Yeah. So I always give Power Rangers credit for being ahead of its time, even today. The yeah. cast was multicultural, and, and I think that that's why it's been around for so long because it just, kids just identify with people that they know and people that they see that look like them. It's, it's powerful. And even more important, it showed that, that the diversity of friendship and, and ethnicities awesome. could be friends. You know, it was like a lot of people, I had a, a kid email me or, or send me a letter and he was like, well, in my neighborhood I grew up, I didn't really know any people that were people of color. I didn't, I didn't have any friends and my friends were playing and um, they all picked Rangers and I ended up being you and I was mad. I didn't want to be the Black Ranger. But then I started watching your character and you danced and you were cool, you were charismatic. So I started digging it and I started taking dance classes and now I have, I'm surrounded by these friends that I'm so glad I met because outside of that I would never, I've never been motivated to do so. So yeah, I love that too. You're, you're a part of that story. I mean, you talked about self-esteem and courage, and yet here you stand speaking your mind. Absolutely. There's something to be said for that. Give her a round of applause. Awesome. Well done. Thank you, guys. All right. Come on up. Hello, I'm Madison. I'm from Fairfax. So I Madison. just wanted to say that I, like, grew up watching you, so this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I wanted to ask about your background in like martial arts and how you got involved in it, if you still are involved with it. I started when I was five years old. My father was uh, heavy into Kenpo. So uh, the Parker style, Kenpo broke down, went to Dave German, and then Ray Parker, or Ray Schneider, who was under German, who was under Parker, taught my father and I. And that was, uh, that was my first martial arts lessons at home. My first official dojo was a judo dojo, and that was, I was five. My father had gone off to war, and uh, that's where he stuck me when he, when he left. And they wouldn't speak English to me. I was the, I was the only round eye in, in the class. And I remember that's where I had to start learning Japanese, and that's where I think I began to learn some of the first lessons in the arts, which was, there's a million reasons to quit, there's a million reasons not to try, there's a million reasons to say it's too tough. But you can be the only reason that you have every day to keep going. And that's what I started doing at age five. And I've been through probably 23 systems at various levels my entire life. I still occasionally, I'll get together at Lear's Martial Arts Studio in Ohio, and we go do master seminars. And we get, I mean, Grand Park, or, uh, Grandmaster Cooper, 10th uh, Dons, all the way down to first degrees. And we, uh, we do knowledge sharing. So we'll teach anybody from Grandmaster on down to the ground in whatever it is each of us specialize in. And then we all close the doors at the end of the night and we train with each other. And uh, usually we leave each other bleeding a little bit, but you know, that's, that's some of the senior level stuff. Always, of course, with discipline and self-control. But uh, you know, if you haven't started in the martial arts and you want to, just do it. Just do it, period. I started uh, doing martial arts at, uh, I think, 11. I think my, my cousin started, he, he'd been bullied in his neighborhood, and he was a martial artist and, and winning karate uh, trophies for katas and, and competition. So I jumped into it, um, kind of for the same reason, uh, and got a brown belt in Ishinru karate. Um, then decided I just wanted to be a teenager and, and went off and did other things, but it was the skills that got me to Power Rangers. And when I got to Power Rangers, I started learning from all the stunt guys and different other people, Austin and so forth. And I, um, being a dancer, I had the ability to pick up on things really quickly. So I was like, I could do the techniques to the punches and the kicks and the, the more difficult stuff, I could do all that. And, um, and I learned a lot, I mean, I studied like from uh, Thai boxing to uh, Taekwondo to uh, Wushu and like all these different guys were amazing would teach me things. Then when I left the show, I, I wanted to be belted. I wanted a, a belt, so I studied Apkido for a number of years and I obtained a black belt doing that. So that's my martial arts training. Nice. Wow. <clears throat> I had no martial arts training. <laughs> I, was, I was a dancer, so 
Um, luckily for me, like I said, back then in, in the 90s, they, you know, dancing was very athletic. So they would always say, you know, put, you know, some kicks and punches when I auditioned. I did that. But the guy, I mean, the stunt team was amazing. And they would literally teach it to me like a dance. And I would learn part by part. And I, you know, they would teach me how to kick properly so that, you know, you get a higher kick and you don't hurt yourself and things like that. But I always credit the stunt team because they really worked with me because I, I didn't want to be the one who, like, that girl doesn't know and you could, everyone else was really trained. So I just worked with them, but they were amazing. Uh, before the show, it was Shaolin Kung Fu. Um, and then after, kind of like the guys, I just went off and tried everything. Bit of JKD, Hapkido. Um, currently, I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a lot of stick and knife, Berlin to walk. I like Filipino martial arts, um, but I'm kind of all across the board. So the answer is yes. <laughs> Thank I you. So let's, a bit this. let's do rapid fire because I do. I think we can get to everyone uh, in the remaining few minutes that we have. So go ahead. Hello, my name is Margaret, and I'm from Baltimore. Hi, Margaret. Hi. First of all, I would like to thank you for coming and sharing your stories here with all of us. Therefore, I would like to ask for the funniest moment story that happened to you on a set that was exciting and make you laugh and maybe make the whole crew laugh. <laughs> 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 has, one, has one come to mind? <laughs> well, it didn't happen to me. I was thinking of them. <laughs> That'll work. Jason so Frank and Johnny kept like running up this tree and like turning backflips. And he was supposed to spot Jason. Okay, okay. Now hang on a second. <laughs> That's not the way that the story goes. I knew that would, hang that on. would get All him right. up. Okay, you We're working on the movie in Australia and there's this like palm tree and it's got like it's almost like steps, but it's yeah. curved up, right? And so <laughs> Jason and I, we were just training because we were bored. And so we were and we were in our civvies, so we were in our civilian wardrobe for the movie. Um, so, and they're setting up lights, it takes forever. So you're just waiting around forever, hours. And so we're doing backflips off this tree and his technique would be like, he would take three steps and then he would backflip. And so I'd be there just in case, right? So he takes three steps. I'm right they here, this is good. They did it a good. thousand times. Right, yeah, yeah, we're doing yeah. this over and over. And me, I would run and I would just bounce off <clears> of <throat> like a frog, I was, I'm a frog. So I'd bounce <laughs> off the tree and he'd be He's there to spot me and I'd spot him. And then I'm standing there, you know, uh, the tree's here, and then he comes running. And we've been doing this for a long time, like All she said. All day, like literally, like And he weeks. comes running. And he, as he's running towards me, he's like, I'm just going to keep going. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what that means, <laughs> right? I just thought, I, he's having such a good time. I just want to keep going forever, Johnny. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm just like, oh, he's just happy. And so he goes, and I count <laughs> one, two, three steps. And I put my hand out. Four, five, <laughs> five and a half. He just keeps going up. And I was like, oh, wait a second. He meant straight up the tree. What, how am I supposed, and now he's coming down towards me head first. And yes. he's like a grown man. You know, I can't catch him. Like, it, first off, it'd be awkward. <laughs> like, our crotch is in our faces. I'm like, I don't know what to do. So I did what anybody here would have done. Wait, 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 oh. What anybody. Oh, okay. <laughs> you good, man? You yes. good? And he, he like, up. he scratched his Ooh. pretty face. He scratched his face. We got cussed out by the yeah. producers. Oh, my God. It was so bad. He, it was, like, it was, like, bad. And he was, like, he, he did he cry? I felt like he wanted to cry. <laughs> he, was, he, he was so no, distraught because no. that was like the first week of shooting the movie. So if you ever watch the rollerblade scene, you'll notice he's always in the very back because that wasn't him. He's so athletic, he could not rollerblade. He had no battle, and his face was all scratched up. So that, I mean, that made us If you look close enough in the film, you'll probably see a little bit of something going on. Yeah, there you go. The moneymaker was ruined. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we're going to move through these last three. That we're running out of time. Come on up. Totally his fault. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. I'm Lashana from PG County, Maryland. What up, girl? And I just want to say to Karen and Ashley, yes. you were the first African American female that I grew up on as a child. And I just want to say thank you Aww. for being a woman of color yeah. that I could see myself on TV. And I just want to say thank you. You were a true inspiration to oh all God. of us. And I just want to say thank you so much. You're it's so awesome. welcome. Thank you. Sweet. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Awesome. We had no idea. Like, I think we were so excited to be on a TV show. But little did Walter and I know the the impact that it would have for for people, you know, of, of color. So yeah, thank amazing. you. Yeah. Awesome. 
Go ahead. I feel kind of awkward now with that. But uh, speaking of awkward uh, fan interactions, I guess this is more to Walter and Karen, seeing as you guys are on Cameo. Um, what's been your weirdest request to do on a Cameo? Uh, I, you know what, it's, it's just, I, I just got one to, uh, to do a bachelor party on a private island. It was just like, it was like, we just want you to say what's up to our buddy. Um, his girl doesn't want any strippers, so we got you. <laughs> okay, all right. So I was like, all right, man, hey. <laughs> it's morphin' time, hey. Did you, did, did you at least twerk? Did you at least twerk on the video? I didn't see that again. I'm joking. I'm joking. I didn't do that, but I did talk to them, and it was funny. I was like, all right, so your girl was like, Stephanie's like, no stripper, so, you know, yo, you know what time it is, right? Like, it's how it nice. starts, man. It's fun, no. <laughs> I Ball a, and chain. I got a really weird request to, uh, <laughs> this guy sent me this email. Long, I, I saw my videos on my website. And uh, this guy sent me this long email, and he was like, he was trying to figure out how to ask his girlfriend out. And he's like, if any, this long description about his girl and him and their relationship. And he was like painting a very vivid picture. And he was a little insecure. So he's like, you know, you were the, you were the Red Ranger. You were like the, the jock, the G unit. Like you, you know, I bet you had a million girlfriends. Okay, maybe. And uh, he's like, would you be me in a video to show me how I should talk to her. And I was like, okay. <laughs> is this a life coach lesson? Is that what's going on? <laughs> this is his girlfriend? This, okay. His girlfriend. He already got her. Like, and, I don't understand. But I, th I think he was, I, I don't want to repeat everything that was in the email. I'm just going to tell you there were some legit insecurities. And, but he's asking me to step in and coach him on some of these things that are like between two people only. Ooh. And I was like, uh, you know, I don't really, I don't really know what to no, I'm just going to refund you. I, 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 can't, I can't help you with that. That's a different take on Sarah Nelda Bergerac, right? Good minor, luck. minor clean compared to that. I, I just have helped people like get married. Like I've been part of proposals. Like they like for us to kind of set it up and then they, you know, like they play this video and you're like, oh, he's so great and he loves you and da da da. And then I guess at some point he's on his knee and he delivers the, so I did one and I did it like three or four times because I really wanted it to be perfect because obviously it was a special moment. Awesome, awesome. Go ahead. Last yeah. question. Yeah, this question is for Austin. I was just wondering what it was like to come back for Beast Morphers. <laughs> Beast Morphers was, I mean, it, I've been pretty picky about any return that I've done. I know there are others that will come back for anything. Um, I, try to, I try to make sure that the character Jason is... <laughs> who do you think is, he's uh, talking about? <laughs> subtle, very subtle. Who, who do you think he's talking about, Johnny? Who, uh -huh. who would anyway. come back for anything? <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm pretty particular when they're going to bring Jason back. I want it to be done right. And um, they were like, hey, New Zealand and uh, the executive producer, Chip Lynn, who started as a PA, like he got coffee for people 28 years ago. He'd risen all the way to executive producer. And I mean, like he was the man on the show. And he called me up personally. And they'd sent me contracts while I was in the Middle East for the war. They're like, hey, would you come film? I'm like, I can't. Are you crazy? And... He's like, there's still two guys left from back when you filmed that you should, like Sean Tarkenton, who was a second unit DP, uh, one of the stunt guys was, was still there, and, and Chip. And I was like, wow, I can film in New Zealand. I get to meet these old guys before, you know, they're, they're done. And it was, it was a great time to come back. I would have liked to have had a little more time to, to prep, but I had a great time coming back. And it kind of reminded me, me seeing these new guys, I'm like, oh, wow, that's what we at 18, 19, 20, yeah. like, yeah. they're the noobs, you know, they're the babies on the platform now. And all, they were having all the same issues we had, like nothing had changed at all. So it, it was a great experience. New Zealand was beautiful. I'm glad I went. Thank you. That's a great question. Guys, I'm going to take a selfie with you, but a COVID style selfie. So you guys are in the background. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. All right. Thank you very much. Give it up thank for you. the Power thank Ranger you panel. Hi, this is Michael Shanks, and you're watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The fate of the universe may depend on it. And have fun, and follow your fandom.